Hello, this is Lonium, and today I'll be doing an analysis of this Medico Biaxial Cam Lock. Although it may be a small lock, it's not a boring lock. Look, to start off with, the, this lock does not have a key, yet, because I got it explicitly for picking and didn't need a key. So I grabbed one of my random Medico keys just to show what makes them uh, unique. So you have your angled biddings, which determines the rotation of a key pins in the lock. You've got in the biaxial six positions, left, right, center, and then fore and aft for each one of them. I will show that when I take, a, when I take apart this lock. With the key out of the way, yeah, let's get started on the lock itself. So uh, to disassemble it, you want to remove the nut from the back. Then remove the lock, the lock washer. Then the cam. And finally, yeah, the stop washer, which just this prevents it from rotating being past a certain extent. Then nut you just slide it out and you've got your lock core. First, let's start on the body itself. It is a threaded, it's threaded because you screw it in like a cam lock. Inside, there are two sidebar slots that's located 180 degrees from each other. They are fairly rounded, did not the sharp angular ones like acid does. So uh, uh, I'm not sure whether or not that would make it easier or harder here to pick. On the back, you've got your protrusion right here. That's what interfaces with the stop washer. So uh, this is the yeah, 90 degree stop washer. So uh, as you can see, it interfaces with it. And uh, then you can only rotate it 90 degrees before it will stop the rotation by the protrusion making contact body overall appears to be brass, not particularly special. So let's set that aside and move on to the lock itself. You've got your captive sidebar, which you do not need to hold in. Very handy. You've got uh, drill protection for that sidebar. Drill protection for the pins. And the key weight, it has holes in it. Not 100% sure what their usage is for, but it is something that I noticed when I picked it up. So, but to open it up, you take a small flathead screwdriver, this is a one millimeter one, and slip it under the brass plate carefully. Be sure to hold it down with your finger because the springs will want to go flying. We're setting the plate aside and we can set the screwdriver side. All the springs are identical, so I'm just gonna put them in. So uh, uh, now to empty the pins out. Okay, so uh, With that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the core. So with the core, you have five pins and your sidebar. There is no milling or anything in the core because there's not really room for such for said milling or any usage for it. because there's no driver to catch a hold of it. So uh, what the only thing stopping it from turning is a sidebar. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at the sidebar. So for the standard Medico sidebar, right, you've got slots up at, you've got a slotted one. 
I'm actually going to give me one moment. So, uh, but right here I have a standard medical core. The sidebar has the vertical slots on it. This is because it's only controlling the rotation. So you can see the, the, the groove in the side. So it can slot right in. The difference between them is that in a cam lock, you don't have drivers. So how do you control the height? What you do is you make it so that instead of but using, using vertical fences, you've got just round posts. So uh, well, that will control both directions. I'm not going to remove the sidebar because I'm actually not sure how. Well, but anyways, let's move on. The spring is nothing special, just a, a small steel spring. Now to the pins. Each pin has a little post on it at the top that goes within the spring. And it has a yeah, little hole in the side, which is where the post goes on the sidebar. It's also got a little flag to prevent it from rotating beyond the range. And a bevel tip that interfaces with the key. Yeah, as well as the two uh, uh, vertical serrations. All the key pins are the exact same length. Meaning that it's already balanced. The spring fits over that. Each one has between two and three serrations on it, depending. And the only thing that determines the height is and rotation is this little slot right here. So uh, something that I've personally noticed or feel that could be done better is, is if they added a false slot, if they added a false hole here, at a different rotation, that could make it much harder to pick. As you can see, one side of a hole is wide. One side is wider. That's because that's where the flag goes. So the sidebar binds down. And when you So with it binding, you can feel it and when it's set, it will move a bit, but not very much. Let's, let's get a better pin to demonstrate it, one where the serrations will come into play. So uh, with it like this, when I push up on it, if you'll listen carefully, you should be able to hear clicking. So something to notice, remember how I said I would show about the fore and aft? So uh, notice how uh, on uh, these two pins, the, the you know, rotation flag is on opposite sides, or rather, notice how the chisel tip, the flat of the chisel, and the flat of the chisel are both up, yet the flags are on opposite sides. So you've got your four and your aft pins. So uh, this one is a four because uh, it's facing towards the, f the front of the keyway. And this one is an aft. 
the rotations vary, but and there's uh, different specifications varying depending on the rotations and fore aft, but I will not get into those. That's all I have for you. Uh, have a nice day.